I'm Pete Cashmore, founder and CEO at Mashable. We're here with uh, Al Gore. Thanks, Mr. Gore, for joining us. Uh, Thank we're you, here Pete. for a climate reality here in New York. Um, I'd love to start just more generally, obviously, we're just coming off the back of the election. Mm. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Where were you on election night? Well, I was in uh, San Francisco uh, hosting live coverage on current TV. Great. Uh, and we did six hours, and it was a very uh, interesting and compelling way to follow the results as they unfolded. What were your expectations going in? Did you think it was going to be as close as the media was saying? Well, uh, I was one of the many who drank uh, Nate Silver's Kool-Aid. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, also I have uh, some friends in the uh, president's campaign and I, I saw some of the data there that tended to confirm what Nate was reporting mm -hmm. and modeling. Uh, so I wasn't that surprised, but I was prepared for the the possibility of an unpleasant surprise <laughs> the other way. So there was a there was definitely a lot of suspense. Looking through all the data, working it all out, doing the sums, um, you know, is there still a role for punditry there, or is it all going to be data driven going forward? Well, I think it'll be a mix of of, of course, but I do think that. Uh, we saw a brand new phenomena with uh, big data and mm -hmm. with the kinds of techniques that were portrayed in Moneyball mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, use of statistics in a, in a very precise way to predict outcomes applied to politics and it worked. And so yes, I think we're obviously going to see a lot more of that. And by the way, companies all around the world are now scrambling to uh, make use of big data to to uh, find their customers and uh, make their supply chains more efficient and all of that. But there are always uh, intangibles that uh, can't be modeled or analyzed. So it, it will continue to be a mix. But let me draw an analogy. Those who did not uh, like the projections from mm -hmm. the data uh, attacked uh, Nate Silver. Yeah. And they attacked others who said, look, we can tell you uh, how this thing is going. The same thing is true where climate is concerned. Uh, the evidence is overwhelming. Uh, all of the National Academies of Science everywhere in the world uh, have said, look, this is real. They say the evidence is, their word, indisputable. Mm -hmm. And yet, those who, for example, coal companies and oil companies, uh, ideologues who uh, just don't want uh, any action taken to stop the climate crisis, uh, they challenge the data, yeah. and it, it actually comes down to whether or not we are willing to accept the best uh, approximation of reality that we're capable of producing as human beings. So what is the, the state of the media? I mean, you obviously founded Current TV. How's the internet, you know, and sites like ours, how's that changing the conversation? Well, the internet is uh, a very hopeful development, and blogging, you know, sites like Mashable. There is no site like Mashable, precisely, but what you all represent is, for me, a very hopeful sign because it gives individuals a chance to express their views and connect with others who will judge for themselves the quality of the information that they're mm -hmm. receiving and then either endorse it, add to it, disagree if they wish, but over time, uh, the collective wisdom rises to the top. That is what used to happen a long time ago when the print medium was the principal source of information mm -hmm. for democracy. Television uh, interrupted that uh, connection between individuals and collective decision mm -hmm. making. Uh, and the traditional media has failed badly where global warming is concerned. Uh, you know, every uh, newscast, every political commentary show, with one exception, Current TV doesn't uh, take their money, but all of the others, uh, one of their biggest advertisers, day in and day out, year in and year out, are uh, coal companies and oil companies and gas companies. And they give the message that if you just leave it to the oil companies, everything will be all right. They've become frightened to even say the word climate. 